Hello YouTube and welcome back to Allie's Wonderland Creations. I am Alice Serafin and I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the United States. Well, I've been watching YouTube a little bit and everybody's doing these faux step cards. So, I decided to design my own version of the faux step card. Yeah, I'm calling it the double panel faux step card featuring the handmade wishes bundle, which is this gorgeous stamp set. And let's see, I've got quite a bit of stuff on my desk and this gorgeous punch. I'm absolutely in love with it. I have been playing with it quite a bit. So your basic faux step card, I have did some things. I did this little idea of somebody's uh, faux step card. I did not like that this was so low and I just wasn't too overly um, impressed with it. I didn't like that that was so low. So I did I have a sample to show you. This is what I'm calling my double panel faux step card. It's got these two panels. It goes all the way across the back, which we're going to be putting a piece of DSP there to write on. And it's got a much wider base here and this comes up much higher and I'm hoping whoever's making that noise will be quiet. This was with some retired okay, and me that. playing um me just playing around to get an idea of what we're doing. So I'm gonna set that up here so I can look at it. So what are we using? We are still using we're gonna be using granny apple green celebrate everything which is a hostess um dsp and i can show you in the catalog it is a huge pack of paper it is right here this is the hostess dsp it is 18 dollars when you purchase um 150 dollars worth of merchandise even as a demonstrator, you have to hit that $150 mark to purchase that. But it is got something for every single occasion in the catalog. It's a massive pack of paper. I'll be having paper forever. So like I said on my whiteboard, um, we are also doing a gift bag and a gift tin filled with gift tags. I'm going to show you my little gift, my little tin here. Got it from the dollar store. It's a magnetic 10. I've got it filled with some tags. We're going to decorate the top. I've got that started. I am using a simple uh, brown paper lunch bag from my gift bag. You can see I have cut the top off. We'll go over that when it's time. Um, but for now, let's get on with the card and what you will need. So this is my whiteboard. I'm going to go over everything you need. Um, if you prefer, here is my little recipe card that you can take a look at. So your card base is four and a quarter by 11, scored at four, eight, nine, which we will do together. Our layering card stock is three and three quarters by four. DSP is three and a half by three and three fourths. Our panel pieces, you'll need to cut two or one and a quarter by 11. Our panel cardstock is one by 10 and three quarters. And I'm going to tell you right now that is wrong. I changed it on my whiteboard, but not my recipe. So panel piece, one and a quarter by 11, scored at five and a half. You'll need two at Granny Apple Green. Basic layering piece for this is basic white, and that's one by five and a quarter. Quarter. So one by five and a quarter. And then the next piece for your panel is the DSP, and that's the three quarters inch strip by five. You'll need two of those. Our bottom step pieces here are one and a half by four and a quarter, and your layering piece is one and a fourth by four, and your DSP then is one by three and three quarters. So I'm going to put my little recipe card up in front of me, my mat, and I'm going to move my whiteboard and bring in, 
as it drops to the floor, y'all. Ta-da! We're going to bring in my cutter trimmer. And I have all of my cardstock cut, and we'll go through all of that in a moment. But right now, this is our card base. So our card base, like I said, is four and a quarter by 11. So on the 11 inch side, you need to open it up. And on the stamping up trimmer, it looks like you guys can see me. This dark blade is the cutting blade. This light one is the scoring blade. The light one is the one we want to use. So we're going to score at four. So we're scoring at four, scooching it down to eight and scooching it down then to nine. Now, um, I may not have as many videos in this month of December when you see this and that's because I've been diagnosed with an aggressive form of skin cancer. Yes, I have and I'm having surgery on the 21st of November and um, my arms are going to be pretty cut up. So not sure how long that's going to take me to recover but um, that's what I'll be doing and they're going to be testing my lymph nodes as we crease this um, and if it's in my lymph nodes then I will have to have chemotherapy and the removal of all of the lymph nodes so I am just going like so and I can already tell this is not <laughs> so yeah that one is not quite right why did I do that? I did it on my last one, so we're going to have to modify this. Let's see. I scored it nine. I bet it's supposed to be at nine and a half. So I did it the last time on here. So from there to there, it's supposed to be one and a half, and I did it again. It's going to be okay. We're going to fix it. Don't fret, okay? as I was talking about that other issue. So from here to here is one and a half inches from the score line to here. So that would make it nine and a half and not nine. I probably just forgot to write the nine and a half. So there you have it. So no one's going to see it. Trust me with the ribbon I got going on here, it's gonna be just fine score up and then I'm gonna score down so now we have it that will just give us a guide to put our ribbon on the card so this is what it's looking like okay this is a no-no let me get the ruler to show you our scoring four eight and nine and a half not nine nine and a half okay make sure you make a note of that I have so next we have our two panel pieces which are one and a quarter by 11 and they are just scored in half at five and a half and we have already done our scoring and next we're going to bring in for our panel pieces our first layering piece I have a fly that wants to bother me is in basic white and we are going to glue those down. And I'm going to go ahead and use my large bottle of Tombow for this. So I will say when you do glue these down, make sure you have your score line at the top. As the back side is just solid. So I'm making sure my score line is at the top. And these pieces are one by five and a quarter our next layering piece is three quarters of an inch by five and i want that little guy i this dsp is so forgiving you can piece it together i have pieced it together you can do so much with it but i do like certain gingerbread men on here 
Uh, I like them going a certain way, just my personal preference. So some are upside down, just that guy, there's more of him. So there are our pieces there. Our next piece is our card base layer. And we have our card base layer of basic white. And my recipe card is missing in action. So let's put down here. So our card base, our layer three and three quarters by four and our DSP is three and a half by three and three quarters. We're gonna glue those together. And on my recipe, it did not say to cut two of the basic white, but if you want a piece to write for the back, so on this piece, cut two, one for the back. And that's what I have done here. You can see it's the identical same size. Now I had this little leftover strip, which I am going to, one way or the other, it fits in here nicely with a little border of white, kind of mimics everything else we're doing. And this piece, let's see, is three quarters of an inch by three and a half. And this is just optional, okay? You don't have to do this, but I chose to because I have that extra piece of DSP. So we're going to open up our card base and we have our four inch square there. Well, four inches by four and a quarter at the farthest distance from us. That's the back of our card. This is the front piece. That's where this panel is going to go. And it either goes one way or the other. It is not square. So it does not Fit universally in there if it's one way or the other so we're going to layer that into its spot so we come up here this is our step piece here and so we have we are not gluing this on there this is for left this is one and a half by four and a quarter so let's get this in its spot I had an issue with the bottom of the step card and this right. is going to cover it up. I'm hoping <laughs> we'll see, right? That's why we're going to put this together in a second and we'll see. And then my DSP is one inch by three and three quarters. That was my husband coming in. He wanted to talk to me about something. And he's like, oh, sorry. So here we go. Now we are gluing our panel pieces. So from here to here, you can see I did not want this like that. I didn't like it. So I chose instead to put this behind and we're going to cover that up. I like that better and we're going to stick with it. So you can either choose to mark on the back of your step here, which is one and a half from here to here. It's one and let's see, I'm going to use the grid here. Yeah. One and a half inches. So you can flip this over, mark one and a half. And just don't put any glue above that line. I'm going to get a nice, you can use tear tape, you can use whatever adhesive you like. I'm choosing to use the wet glue. And I'm going to slide this right there. I am using my edge of white there as a guide, my layering strip here is behind here and that's what I'm using to guide that. So I'm going to repeat this. I'm going to do that one and a half inch line on the back and add my glue or adhesive. Then I'm going to open this up. 
using this as my guide. Just like so. Now for the back, you can just open her up. Like so. Flop that right down like so. And that is going to add our pieces. So I'm going to start up here where I can see clearly because we don't want any glue being where it should not be. And it's that simple. And it really is simple. Okay. Except for, of course, you know, I made a mistake the first time. It happens. And I like the profile of this. I I just love it. And it comes together beautifully. Okay, this now doesn't go this way. It goes this way and it covers up all of our and add some glue to those panels. And this is for our back. And it's going to nestle right on top of those. Got a little excess there. So that now is our back. You don't need to open it up. You could if you wanted to, but I chose to do the back because I wanted this covered up and I just think it finishes the card. Now I told you this piece is going to go right here, but yes, it is. Okay. What do I do? I am bringing in some seam binding ribbon white because this is all I have. I don't have, I have pool party, but I didn't do the card base in pool party or I would have used some pool party ribbon. So we are going to do one of two things. I can put it all the way around there like so. Whew. Come on, fly, go away, go away, go away. Or do I want to do that? I'm trying to figure it out. You know what? We're going to do it. We are going to go for it. We are going to glue this piece onto its counter part. You could also put it up on dimensionals, which would be cute. Do we do? Yeah, let's do it. Dimensionals. Why not? Right. And I have a little container that I moved away from its spot. It needs to go back in its drawer. <gasps> oh, okay. So we're going to put dimensionals on here and we're just going to pop two right there and then that will secure this to its coordinating spot. That makes it nice and easy and move the glue. Oh, I love it love it i love that it pops up there and then this ribbon do we need the ribbon we may not need the ribbon let's finish going with our center piece here so you're layering circle dies i will show you what we have now i am missing a layering circle die this was a Last summer, I loaned these to my daughter and my darling grandson, in his wisdom, decided to cut one of my circle dies up. Yes, he actually did. It doesn't surprise me any. It's just, uh, that's my grandkid. And she is like, Mom, I will replace them. And I'm like, I know, honey, but not right now. So I still haven't. It's one of these. It's actually the one that goes over here. I used the largest one in Granny Apple Green. Then I used, which one? This one here, which would have been the second largest of those circles for that one. And then I chose this ring right here to go on top. This is going in the center place of our card. So... You do not have to do the circles, but the circles tied in to um, all the gift tags I've made in my tin because I was sitting here 
using um, scrap. I'm just using the kissing technique, getting some of that excess glue off of that white circle. And now I have glue on that piece. And this, my friends, is going right there. And it's so, so cute. Okay. Um, let me show you the sample. On the sample, I use the decorative circle punch in the tags. We are going to do the tag, but right now we're going to get our pieces on here. So we need to be a little careful as for where we put our glue. So I'm going to hold my finger here, turn it around, make a little mark there. And I'm going to make sure that I don't get glue going that direction. And then I'm going to eyeball it on the other side. That should be, I want to make sure I get it straight. Oh, just absolutely love this card. This may be my Christmas card design. I might have to use other paper because I've used quite a bit of this DSP design. Um, oh, let me think. I might have to see what other Christmas paper I got to do this with. So, isn't this coming together? So cute. So, what do we have? I'm going to show you how to do these, but we have Merry Christmas. We have For You, you could use. I've already done these ones. Happy Holidays. Any of these will work. We're going to use all of them, and then we're going to make a gift tag. So on our card, we are going to use Merry Christmas, and we're going to pop that up on Dimensionals. So I'm not going to go to the top. I am going to put four on here, just bringing it in some so that I know nothing is going to be in the way. So here we go. Merry Christmas. And it's so, so darling. I hope you guys like it as much as I do because this is just coming together beautifully. Our card is now done. Like I said, we could add our ribbon down here at the bottom. If I had some granny apple green or something would be really cute. Uh, I don't have any poppy parade ribbon. You know what? A little side bow over here would be quite darling. So we're going to go ahead and go for it. So I'm going to cut me a little piece there. I want to use a glue dot because of the seam binding and it's in the uh, front. If I was in the back, I would be using handed on these scotch tape. Yes, I would. So let me start down here. I want it. My bow is going to be right here. So I know I have plenty of ribbon right there. I'm going to come back around and use another glue dot right on top of that one. My handy dandy little tiny needle here. So I'm going to pull this nice and tight and now I'm going to cut off my excess and now I'm going to make me a bow I'm going to make a pretty little bow using the handy dandy bow maker my lovely husband made so sometimes I like to figure out put these on here how big of a bow do I want and it's right about there which is about four of my little notches he did for me. Um, if I can find my ruler, I can tell you. So it's about one and three quarters inch. Ooh, the loops. And we could do a double bow as this ribbon is so wonderful to work with. Absolutely love it. little bows ever. We're going to use another little glue dot. 
and pop these back in spot. We might be using some more of that. Handy dandy needle. Make sure that gets way in a way. And just put that at an angle and you can kind of squeeze it up behind there and it kind of goes together with the glue. Oh, so cute. We do need to trim this edges up a bit. Yes, I like the ribbon. Now you could embellish it if you wanted to, but the paper is so so busy and so cute. This really needs nothing more. You could put some Winka Stella if you wanted, like on the little berries. But other than that, I really would not do any more to this card. So let's get on. We do need an envelope, which I can show you what I would do because it's from my last card. This is what my envelope will look like when I'm done. And except for the leaves will be in Granny Apple Green. We're going to scooch that aside and bring in our gift bag. So I told you we're using a standard lunch bag. And all I did was cut two inches off of the top. Okay. Now in this little lunch bag, you're going to see... You could put a lot of stuff in this little lunch bag. Making it a gift bag is quite easy. This little round tin, which is roughly three and a quarter inches round, fits gorgeous in the bottom. You could fill it with chocolates, with candies. I'm going to show you what I'm filling it with. Um, that's why those were just to show you. I made some little gift tags using my leftover scrap pieces. So just simple, uh, nothing on the front, just the DSP to and from. This is the decorating circle punch, the layering circle dies. I used the essential tag kit and did a little uh, rectangle there and a little scrap of DSP and all of these wonderful little gift tags are going in the tin. Now to make a cover for the tin, I went to the layering circle dies. Again, no dimensionals. And I made this tag handmade with love and that is going to go up on dimensionals on our tin. So that's why, ah, the circles aren't on dimensionals and don't worry we're gonna make a gift tag I'm gonna show you but I would be here way too long if I had to sit here and make all of them for you so let's get this off first but handmade with love and now we do need um, some tear tape which is right over here to adhere it. Oh, you know what? I think I made a boo-boo. Handmade with love was supposed to go on the inside. Yes. So can I get this off? Please come off. That was supposed to go to cover up. Okay. Correction. This has for you is supposed to go. Let's just add these back here. Add a little glue on there for the ones that we took off. Because the gift is for you. So that is going on the lid of our tin. The blue is the best that I can get. The other choice was a peach color, and um, oh, and those are supposed to be much shorter because this is supposed to be covering that up. I'm getting ahead of myself. I have another extra circle. We'll just oh, that's gonna go. I 
I'm having. Okay. Yes, the circle is going on the other side too. So it doesn't matter how long these are. Well, it does. It doesn't. I don't have to worry about pulling them up. Might help if I use the bone folder. So here is my little tin. And since when you open it up, it has that clear lid, you don't want to see the sticky tape. So that's why we have another layering circle in Granny Apple Green. Um, I'm going to add some more tear tape to the back of this. Pop that right on there. And now we have this one, which we can keep on dimensionals and add a couple more. So there's one. And one is stuck to my fingernail. Add a little glue to the ones that got pulled off just to make sure they stick or glued out. So it says handmade with love because everything in here is handmade with love. That is our little tin. Now, before we go to our gift bag, and you can already guess, this last layering circle die popped up on dimensionals. This one is getting glued straight down. This is for our gift bag. I just changed it up a bit is all. So happy holidays is going on our gift bag. But we want, before we close our gift bag up, I'm going to show you how to do the gift tags from this kit. So we are using from the back of the DSP. It tells us what colors coordinate. So one was crushed curry, which I stamped. And that's all we're using of the crushed curry. Then I came in with the pool party. It's very, very faint. I used this little piece here. I must have put that one away already. Did not mean to do that. So this little swirly image. And we are stamping off, which that's not good because there's something under there. That gives us that little squirrely blue snowy detail. And then we're coming in with the two and the from, which is in Poppy Parade. You can see I stamped something in black on my Poppy Parade. So I'm coming right here with two. These are from the kit and I'm so thankful they did not connect them because they work just so much better without being connected to and from. And we're going to come in with the little berries and our little holly leaves are going to be in Granny Apple Green. And we have a right and a left one. So we're using our left one first. I'm going to pop that off real quick. Cute. Okay. And is that all my stamping? Yeah, pretty much. This one I will punch out and use. Again, we can do another tag. Now you can, this is great because it can go this way, this way. It is just so absolutely versatile. Let's see, trying to line it up nicely. There we go. Now, if that is all you wanted, all you would need to do, and I will do a few like this for my tin. And I have some, um, this is not, it's a type of yarn to make doilies with. Works great for gift tags. Um, 
I have about six inches, probably about six and an eighth or something. I do like 13 inches and then I cut that in half. So we're just making our little knot here. Yikes. So there is our little gift tag. Ah, sorry, the little fly is bothering me. That is popping inside there like so. Now we are ready to close up our gift bag. So it's there. Where's my envelope? I guess we should do, let's do our envelope while we're doing this. Because if I put it in the gift bag, I want it to have its envelope. So we already showed you how I would do my envelope. Let's go ahead and just get it done. So we're using Granny Apple Green. I'm going to start with Poppy Parade. And I'm going to start down here in the corner, leaving room for my little holly leaves. Because I want them. Oh, and I just did it in red, didn't I? Not the green. So here's one. Take that off because we're going to use it again in a second. Granny Apple Green. Oh, so cute. And I just got ink on my card. Okay, we're going to leave it like that and I'm going to hopefully be able to use that little sand eraser and get that off or I might just sponge all over the envelope. So you can see our card fits in our envelope. My neighbor on his Harley getting ready to go hunting with my husband. They're waiting for my grandson to come home. So there is our envelope in our bag. And yes, yes, yes. We should. Let's see. it over. I'm going to come in with my crocodile. I wish Stamping Up would sell these. I would buy another one. Love, love, love mine. So I'm going to bring in my doily thread, which you could dye if you wanted it to match. I am just hopefully going to get it through the holes of my gift bag. You could stick a little loaf of bread, something, a bunch of cards. This is a great, very inexpensive way. That's my son's little bong. There's our little bow hanging on the side. And Happy Holidays is going right there. So let's get, what are we going to use? We're going to use tear tape. Just make it easier so it'll stick right away. One, two strips. We'll do it. You could do dimensionals, however else wet glue would work too. Moving my little tags. You could stamp on the gift bag. I will do a video on that next. I'm making gift bags. So there is our gift set. You open this up. I said, and voila, we have our goodies inside. 
our gift bag, our gift tin full of gift tags. And that is my recipe card. And I'm going to go on a fly killing spree in a second. I got one fly that just will not leave me alone. And our faux double panel faux step card, which is absolutely fabulous. You could do a photo on the back, a message on the inside. I absolutely love this. And I hope you have enjoyed. And I hope you don't, you think I did a good job with uh, the time. Um, if you did, please let me know. I am so interested in your opinions and I do respond to all of my um, comments and um, please help me grow my channel. I love sharing this with you. I don't do a lot of advertising for purchasing things, for stamping up as a demonstrator. My goal for this channel is to share my love of paper crafting with the rest of you. And um, that is what I really love doing. But if you are looking for a demonstrator and don't have one, I would love to be your demonstrator. But I don't have to be to share with you. So come back and visit me in my wonderland. Bye bye now.